is our second video about inequalities. So our learning target today is I can solve inequalities using multiplication and division. Please make sure you write down the date that you're watching this. Write down your I know statement. We know how to solve inequalities using addition and subtraction. So you could write that, but we haven't done it with multiplication and division yet. And there's no vocabulary today. So please pause the video while you write all that and restart when you're ready. So we're going to start by looking at a couple examples. And if you're thinking to yourself, oh, well, this isn't going to be any different. I can just brush through this video. There's actually a couple weird things that happen when we are doing multiplication and division. So let's start with the inequality. N over 7 is greater than 7. If I were going to solve this the way that I did um, with the addition and subtraction, I'd put a line through the greater than sign. I'll multiply by 7 on either side, and I will get n is greater than 49. Now, if I want to check that answer, I need to come up with a value that is greater than 49 and put it back into my original equation and see if it works. So I want something to make sure that my answer divided by 7 is actually bigger than 7. Okay, well, let's come up with something bigger than 49. Let's just do 70. 70 is bigger than 49, so that would fit my inequality. 70 divided by 7 is 10. 10 is bigger than 7. Yep, that checks out. It works. Now let's try n divided by negative 7 is greater than 7. Okay? If I do the same thing, I multiply by negative 7 on each side. I get n is greater than negative 49. Okay, so this time I want to make sure that if I pick a number bigger than negative 49, that that number divided by negative 7 will be bigger than 7. Okay, well, something bigger than negative 49, well, let's go with negative 42. Negative 42 is bigger than negative 49 because it's closer to zero. If I do negative 42 divided by negative 7, I get the number 6. Already I see that we have a problem. 6 is not greater than 7. And this actually leads to our rule. Any time that we are multiplying or dividing each side of an inequality, by a negative number, we have to flip the inequality symbol. So what that means is that for up here on our previous example, n is not greater than negative 49. I still have my negative 49 and my n, but I have to flip the symbol backwards and make it less than. If I do that, I would have 6 is less than 7, and that now is true and works. So anytime we're solving an inequality and we have negative numbers we have to multiply or divide by, we need to make sure that we are flipping the inequality. So let's say that I had 26 is less than negative 2x. Okay, I would draw my line through the equal sign, and I would say, okay, I'm going to divide by negative 2 on each side. Because I'm dividing by a negative number, that means that my inequality is going to be flipped the opposite direction. I'm left with x on this side, 26 divided by negative 2 is negative 13, and my answer is negative 13 is greater than x. could also do it with if I had y divided by negative 5 is less than or equal to 20. Again, I would draw my line through the equal sign. This time I multiply by negative 5 on each side. Multiplying by a negative number means I have to flip my inequality. And I'm left with y is greater than or equal to negative 100. 
when this gets especially tricky to remember, but also especially important to remember, is when we are solving equations that are more than one step. So let's say I had 4p minus 9 is greater than or equal to negative 1. Okay. Well, the first thing I would do is add 9 to each side. Remember, when we're adding, or if I were subtracting, adding and subtracting does not make me flip my inequality. So my inequality is still the greater than or equal to. And I have 4p is greater than or equal to 8. Because negative 1 plus 9 is 8. Now this time I'm dividing by the number positive 4. If I divide by the number positive 4, again, this is a positive number. So even though I'm multiplying, I'm still not flipping my inequality sign. Okay? What if I had, let's try this one, 25 minus 10x is less than or equal to 20. Okay. So again, working through this carefully. The first thing I'm doing is subtracting 25 from each side. Remember, I want to get that x by itself. Now I'm subtracting 25, but this is a subtraction. It's not multiplying or dividing by a negative number. My symbol stays the same. 20 minus 25 is negative 5, and over here I have negative 10x. Okay? Now, to get the x by itself, I need to divide by negative 10. This time, because I am dividing by a negative number, my greater than or my symbol turns into a greater than or equal to. Then I have x. And negative 5 divided by negative 10. Oops, I don't know how that happened. Negative 5 divided by negative 10 is 1 half or 0 0.5 if you did that on your calculator. Okay. Last thing we're going to talk about is what if you had a word problem? I want to quickly show you how you would write this as a write out a word problem and solve it as an inequality. And there will be more examples of this in your practice for today. You want to buy shares of stock in a company. Every share of stock costs $12.50. Okay, I'm going to highlight that because it's each share of stock costs $12.50. You can spend no more than $325. Write and solve an inequality to find how many shares you can buy. Okay. Well, so I have each share costs twelve fifty. So I know it's going to be twelve fifty times each share, which I'll just represent with an S. And I know that I want that to be no more than three twenty five. So three twenty five is going to be on the other side. Now I have to figure out what symbol should go in between. So I'm going to think about the relationship. No more than 325. I want to think about can this be more than 325? Can it be less than 325? And can it be equal to 325? Okay, no more than 325. Well, more than that would be 350, say. I know I can't spend 350. I can spend no more than. So it can't be more than. No more than 325. Well, I could spend something less than 325. I could spend, for example, 300. So less than is good. And 300, no more than 325. So I could spend equal to. So I know that I can spend less than $325. I could spend the same amount of $325. That means that my inequality here is less than or equal to. And really the best way to solve these and figure out what symbol goes in between is to really think about what could you actually do? Could it be more than? Could it be equal to? Could it be less than? Again, there will be more practice of this um, in our assignments for the week. As always, please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching and have a great day.